Hi all, I have an amazing game to show you from the St. Louis Rapid section of the event, Levon Aronian against David Novara. So this was uh, actually in round one. So D4 from Levon. Novara plays as though he wants an Imza engine, but uh, we have a Queen's engine, Knight F3 is chosen. B6, and we get a fairly standard uh, set of opening moves for the Queen's Indian. This disruptive check is very, very popular. Just to put the bishop back there to disrupt the D file bit. This has all been seen before. Pretty standard stuff so far. Knight E5, Bishop B7. We have Queen C2, C5. Now uh, white takes away from the center to try and put pressure down this d file. It looks very, very logical play. So the bishop's going to head for f4 or g5 to put more pressure. Well, on g5, it will put more pressure on d5. Queen c8, getting out of that x ray line. But white plays e4 now. Bishop f8. And now the knight is just supported here with f4. d4. And now why it plays knight d5. Is there a slight issue with this? Black took on d5 to be able to kick the knight now with f6. White play. What would you play in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, you might want to use your intuition as well as calculation. I'll have to warn you here. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm not sure you'll have any chance of finding the move. About five seconds to pause the video starting from now. Okay. Rook D E one. Yeah. If you look at the king's side intuitively, and I, I say this intuitively, we want to get rid of some escape squares. And uh this is just a very, very interesting move. Because after F takes F takes you can see that that F files dangerous and there's limited defensive pieces around the king. So the soft spots are being scrutinized more, but especially if white now establishes it, as he does after knight e7, this wedge pawn which covers that escape square f7. So it's as though the black king's being suffocated. The one defensive piece now is holding that soft spot h7 and also hitting the center as well. So threatening uh, White's impressive pawn wedge. Guess what Levon Aronian plays in this position if I give you five seconds. Okay. Rook takes f6. This does a few things. It fragments the pawns around the king. It maintains the pawn wedge, which is holding one of the escape squares. It also means with this pawn wedge, actually white has greater mobility to switch pieces to attack uh, the black king. The knight was holding up the e4 square. The e4 square for the moment is white's playground in this position. He can pivot pieces using e4 as a preliminary, uh, preliminary but queen f5. And we can see that either rook e4 or bishop e4 can be used as a pivot square on e4. Black is helpless here because it's shielded. All these operations are shielded by the pawn wedge. These pieces are just spectating here, basically. Uh, the rook and bishop, it's like they have no relevance at the moment. Okay, but let's see. Queen d8, the rooks switches. Rook e7, trying to defend key soft spot in advance. Check. Now, king h8 is played. You might wonder about bishop g7. On bishop g7, bishop e4 is very dangerous. This position, for example, bishop h6 with a nasty pin, threatening queen takes f6. And if takes check, and this is leading to mate, that pawn wedge is also covering an escape square d7 there. So check, king h8 is played. And white puts more pressure on that soft spot. So very difficult to defend this position. The wedge is also disrupting defensive capability already here. Uh, for example, well, Queen C7, there might be a D6, disruptive D6 at some point, as an example. 
uh, rook c8 was played rook h4 just putting more pressure there and we see now yeah it's very difficult to defend let's have a look at this position uh, in detail black played king g8 if he plays queen c7 actually queen takes f6 here and bishop f4 is very strong where is the queen going then here bishop e5 this is all getting pretty nasty queen h8 threatened and if here this is just getting really really nasty uh, we've got uh, bishop f7 there and it's like mating whatever happens so yeah it gets very very nasty this position uh, on queen c7 it seems uh, yeah queen takes f6 check is is crushing uh, you might think well queen takes d5 here rook takes h7 check queen g6 right rook takes this is well it's just totally winning for white winning that queen because we pick up the bishop as well so yeah black played king g8 and rook takes h7 look at the king's escape squares they've all been cut off basically it's like the process of mating is being demonstrated there's, there's an undercurrent of just squeezing the king taking out escape squares here so if the natural mating patterns should emerge uh, bishop takes d5 is played queen g6 check and now if bishop g7 then there's the classic can you see the classic if I give you five seconds okay the classic rook h8 check so yeah black's on his way out here though in any case he played rook g7 and now white plays a very very neat move a neat winning move what would you play here okay queen h5 the threat is mating note this pawn is holding the escape square here and also the queen so it doesn't even matter if the pawn's taken out it's still mate on h8 yeah black is pretty helpless in this position it's actually a fourth mate in three whenever happens <laughs> black can delay things with rook to, rook takes but if we examine the normal move here like check here is mate Look at that pawn covering the escape square. Yeah, it's all gone here. So black allowed himself to be mated. Rook h8 check. A fantastic game. I think one of the most exciting games of the event in the rapid section so far. And probably a good candidate for rapid game of the year. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.